بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹ ٹیچرز السلام علیکم ویلکم ٹو لیکچر سکسٹین آف فنکشنل انگلش ون دس لیکچر از اباؤٹ پلاننگ اے ہیڈ اینڈ یو نو ہاؤ امپورٹنٹ اٹ از فار ایس ٹو پلان اباؤٹ فیوچر سو ٹاکنگ اینڈ آسکنگ اباؤٹ فیوچر از این امپورٹنٹ فنکشن ان آر لائف اینڈ ان دس فنکشنل انگلش لیکچر we will learn how to talk about future but first let's have a look at uh, the contents of lecture number 15 in lecture number 15 we learned how to use gerunds and infinitives so there was probably a bit of too much grammar in uh, lecture number 15 uh, but it is really important to learn the difference between gerunds and infinitives because they will help us in uh, the lectures that will come in future. In lecture 15, you learned how to express likes and dislikes. You also learned how to give preferences. And in the end, in lecture number 15, you learned how to show indifference. So that is what we learned in lecture number 15. Now it is time to move ahead to lecture number 16. And the objectives of lecture number 16 are that if you complete all the activities and if you follow the guidelines in this lecture, you should be able to talk about future plans and intentions. Uh, and in the meanwhile, you will learn some grammar as well. You will learn how to use present simple tense and present continuous tense for future. Yes, maybe it is, uh, uh, it is interesting to note that present simple and present continuous tenses can be used for future events. We'll learn how. Okay, we'll also learn how to use future simple tense and how to use be going to structure. And in the end, we will learn how to write an itinerary. Uh, maybe you don't know what an itinerary is, uh, but it is really very simple, and I'll explain when we come to that point. Okay, so we start with few s questions. And I would like you to answer these questions. What do you think will happen at school tomorrow? What do you think will happen at school tomorrow? What are you going to do after school today? What are you going to do after school today? What will you do if you don't understand this lesson? What will you do if you don't understand this lesson? Where are you going to travel on your next vacation? Where are you going to travel on your next vacation? Okay, so here are four simple questions that I asked you and probably you have answered them. Uh, now I'm going to ask questions about these questions. Which forms did we use in these questions? Yeah, when I say forms, I mean the grammatical forms. So if you look at these questions, you think quest, uh, question number one, what do you think will happen at school tomorrow? So which form is used? Will happen. Will happen is future simple tense. That's right, you are right. Uh, so we can ask a question about future by using a simple future simple tense will happen look at the second question what are you going to do after school today and this time the form is are you going to do what are you going to do so going to do is uh, the form that we used in order to ask a question about future in question number three, again, we asked a question with will you, what will you do? 
So we used future simple tense here. What are you going to travel? Where are you going to travel on your next vacation? In the last final question, we are again using are going to. So you see, question number one and three use future simple form, and question number two and four use are going to form. Okay, my next question about these questions is, can you explain why we are using going to and future simple for different questions? What's the difference? What do you think will happen at school tomorrow? Can I say, uh, what do you think is going to happen at school tomorrow? Can I say, what, uh, what will you do after school today? Maybe, but uh, what will be uh, the difference in meaning then? If I change the form, how will meaning change? Okay, uh, now probably you thought that when we talk about future, we use future simple tense. I'm afraid it's not as simple. Uh, we can use various forms in order to talk about future. We can use future simple tense, but we can also use be going to. And as we will learn, we can use other forms as well. Uh, but first, let's look at these two forms, using future simple tense and using be going to in order to talk about future. Now, future can be planned or it can be unplanned. When we make plans about future, uh, they can be well thought out in advance or sometimes we make sudden decisions about future. We use will to talk about unplanned future or something that we decided to do at the moment of speaking. So if something is not planned already and we suddenly make a decision while we are making conversation, uh, we use will. For example, if someone says, this bag is really very heavy, and we suddenly decide to help this person, we will use will. And we will say, I'll carry it for you. I repeat, if someone says, this bag is really very heavy, and after listening to this sentence, we suddenly decide to help this gentleman, to help this person, and we come up with this suggestion or offer. I'll carry it for you. And here, I'll is the short form of I will. Uh, because this action was not planned, I'm going to do it, but this is not planned. I have suddenly decided to take this action and therefore I'll say I will carry it for you. Uh, we can't for example say I'm going to carry it for you because I'm going to carry, uh, if I say I'm going to, it is, uh, it refers to planned future. But here the future is not planned, we have made a certain decision so we will use I will carry it for you. Okay, let's look at some more examples. There is someone at the door. So suppose uh, you hear the doorbell ring and someone in your room or in your house tells you that there is someone at the door. And you suddenly decide to open the door. So how would you respond? You would say, I'll get it. I'll get it. Again, you are saying, I will get it or I'll get it, because you have suddenly decided to take this action. This action was not planned. So in similar situations, if the phone bell is ring ringing instead of the doorbell, you can say, I'll pick it up, or I'll get it, I'll pick it up. Uh, or if someone says, let's have some ice cream, uh, you like the idea, you say, okay, but you add and you say, I'll pay. So you suddenly decide that you, are, uh, you will pay for this ice cream. So you make this offer. 
in fact all these are offers here I'll get it I'll carry it for you I'll pay all these are offers but these offers are not planned these offers are sudden decisions that you have taken in response to certain situations okay if someone says oh I've got so much homework and it's very difficult you may say don't worry I'll help you okay in all these situations you will have to say will especially the short form I'll I'll carry it for you I'll get it I'll pick it up I'll pay I'll help you all right so whenever you make certain decisions about future you should say will okay um, now I want you to uh, to go back to the previous slide and see uh, the questions that I asked what do you think will happen at school tomorrow okay this is something that probably you have not planned uh, because you don't know what will happen so you will suddenly uh, dis make a decision or suddenly think about it uh, it is an unplanned future so uh, you will predict about future and uh, it is going to be sudden prediction okay that's why we use will here and similarly what will you do if you don't understand this lesson again you know uh, you have not planned uh, if this situation arises uh, what will be your action and you suddenly decide here okay so we move on um, we use will for sudden decisions okay all right now let's have a look at this dialogue and analyze the use of will and be going to okay I'm going to read it out maybe it's not big enough for you uh, this is a dialogue between Martha and Jane Martha says what horrible weather today I would love to go out but I think it will just continue raining and Jane says oh I don't know perhaps the Sun will come out later this afternoon Martha says I hope you are right listen I'm going to have a party this Saturday would you like to come and Jane says oh I would love to come thank you for inviting me who's going to come to the party Martha well a number of people haven't told me yet but Peter and Mark are going to help out with the cooking Jane hey I'll help I'll help too Martha would you that would be great Jane I'll make lasagna Martha that sounds delicious I know my Italian cousins are going to be there I'm sure they will love it and Jane responds to it says Italians maybe I'll bake a cake Martha no no they are not like that they love it Jane well if you say so is there going to be a theme for the party Martha no I don't think so just a chance to get together and have fun Jane I'm sure it will be lots of fun Martha but I'm going to hire a clown a clown you are kidding me Martha says no no as a child I always wanted a clown now I'm going to have a clown at my own party Jane I'm sure everyone will have a good laugh okay now uh, I want you to look at the uses of will and be going to okay so here you have I think it will just continue raining this is a prediction about future right and it is uh, not based on any external uh, factor it is merely a sudden feeling 
about future. Uh, whereas Jane says, perhaps the sun will come out, again will come out, again it is prediction, but this prediction is not based on any hard facts. It is, uh, certainly uh, she makes this prediction without any signs. Uh, then Martha says, I'm going to have a party. You remember the difference here? Uh, rain will just continue or perhaps the sun will come out. These are not planned events. But I'm going to have a party is a planned event. And therefore, instead of will, she says, I'm going to. Okay, who's going to come to the party? Again, you see, this is planned. Probably uh, Martha has already made a list of the guests whom she is going to invite. Uh, and Peter and Mark are going to help out. So this is already part of the plan. Peter and Mark uh, have offered to help and they are going to help. And Jane suddenly decides, she says, I'll help too. Because she suddenly decides, she says, I'll. Not I'm going to. She says, I'll. Okay. And then she suddenly decides how she is going to help. She is going to help by making a lasagna. She says, I'll make lasagna. Uh, by the way, lasagna is, uh, is an Italian dish. Okay, then part of the plan is that my Italian cousins are going to be there. I'm sure they will love it. Okay, so this is part of the plan that they are going to come. But how they will react? Uh, that's, uh, we'll say, I, they will, they will love it. We are not certain. Uh, and Jane suddenly changes her plan. She says, instead of lasagna, maybe I'll bake a cake. So she makes another uh, sudden decision and she uses the word I'll. Okay. And Martha says, no, they will love it. They love it. And she suddenly uh, tells. So these are not planned events. Uh, this is planned. Uh, is there going to be a theme for the party? And she says, no, I don't think so. Uh, I'm sure it will be lots of fun. Again, it will be lots of fun. Um, this is not planned, but this is the expectation. I'm going to hire a clown is a plan. Uh, I'm going to have a clown at my party is a plan. And everyone will have a good laugh is not a plan, but this is what we can expect if there will be a clown in the party. Uh, so you see, uh, in this dialogue, you have a mixture of will and be going to. And what we learn is that we use will for making predictions and certain decisions. And we use be going to when an action is planned. Okay. Uh, now I'm going to ask you a few questions about this dialogue. So I want you to uh, take some time and go through the contents of this dialogue. Now silently read this dialogue to yourself and then I'm going to ask you a few questions about it. You have two minutes to do that. Okay, great. Uh, I'm sure that you are able to read this dialogue. Now, are you ready for the questions? Okay, good. So here are the questions. Uh, what do they think about the weather? The dialogue was about Martha and Jane. So what do they think about the weather? Yes, uh, Martha thinks that the weather is horrible, it's terrible. 
and Jane agrees with her, but she thinks maybe the sun, sun will come out. Okay, what does Martha have to share? That's right. Martha has to share her plan. And her plan is that she is going to invite, she is going to arrange a party. What are Peter and Mark going to do? That's right. Peter and Mark are going to help out Martha in cooking. What does Jane offer to do? Jane offers to cook, uh, to help in cooking. She says that she'll cook lasagna. How does Jane react to the news about the Italian cousins? That's right. Uh, when she learns that there are going to be some Italian cousins in the party, uh, she suddenly decides to change her plan. Now, instead of uh, cooking lasagna, she says that she'll bake a cake. And why is it so? Because, you know, uh, lasagna is an Italian dish, and Jane is not Italian, and she thinks if she is going to cook uh, Italian cuisine, uh, maybe it won't be perfect. Maybe the Italians won't like it as much uh, as they would like a cake or something different. What special plan is there? Yes, that's right. The special plan is that Martha is going to have a clown. And why does Martha want a clown? Yes, she has always wanted a clown as a child and now she is going to uh, arrange a clown for this party. Does Martha know exactly how many people are going to come? If yes, how many? If not, why not? That's right. You are right, Martha does not know I the exact number of people who are going to come. And why is it so? Because uh, some of them have not informed her yet. Uh, Peter and Mark are going to come because they have informed, but the rest have not yet informed her. Okay, how does Jane think people will react to the clown? That's right. She thinks uh, people will laugh. It'll make people laugh. Is there a theme for the party? Yeah, the answer is no. It is just a get-together party. So it doesn't have any particular theme. Okay, very good. Um, you have read the dialogue and you have answered the questions. Congratulations. Let's move on. Okay. Now, uh, we can also use be going to for future intentions and decisions. Um, these are not sudden decisions. These are decisions about our life. For example, I'm going to be a pilot. I'm going to join the army. I'm going to hire uh, a, a new faculty member. I'm going to do PhD. So these are my decisions about future, or you may call them as intentions. These are my intentions about future. And uh, for these intentions and decisions that are not sudden, uh, for which I have uh, planned for, uh, for some time, uh, we can use be going to. So we use be going to to talk about planned future or intentions. For example, let me ask you some questions. What are you going to do on Saturday? Alright, maybe you have different plans, but your sentence is going to start with I'm going to do, okay, or I'm going to. Uh, here is uh, one expected answer. I'm going to visit my parents, for example. So what are you going to do on Saturday? I'm going to visit my parents. 
Are you free this evening? No, I'm going to see the dentist. No, I'm going to see the dentist. All right, you see, I'm going to see the dentist is already a planned future. Um, so, uh, uh, you can say that it is not a sudden decision, it is not an intention. Uh, sorry, it is not a sudden uh, intention. It is planned event and she intends to see the, uh, the dentist. Uh, the verb see here means to meet. Okay, would you like to go hiking with us? I'm afraid I can't. I'm going to tidy up my room. So I'm going to tidy up my room is my planned, uh, planned event or at least this is what I intend to do. So I'm not uh, going hiking because I intend to tidy up my room. And if someone makes an offer and says, uh, makes a suggestion and says let's go shopping, I can say I'm going to finish this book first. So my intention is to finish this book before I uh, do anything else. What are your future plans? I'm going to join the army. And uh, you know here, uh, you can answer this question in any way you like. All right, but uh, the main point that we learned here is that we use be going to, to talk about planned future or intentions. So I repeat, so far we have learned that we use will or short form of will like I'll uh, when we are talking about sudden decisions or when we suddenly predict about future. Okay, uh, But we use be going to when we talk about planned future or when we talk about our future intentions. So is that clear? Very good. Let's move on. Okay, now let's talk uh, about future plans. You are going to listen to this dialogue from Grammar Challenge by BBC Learning English and you are going to answer the following questions. So, uh, this slide will be displayed on the screen and in the background you will listen to the dialogue and uh, once the dialogue is over, I want you to pay attention to it. Once the dialogue is over, I'm going to ask you the questions that are displayed on the screen. Uh, in fact, what you should do is go through the questions first and then I'll play the audio for you. Okay, very good. I hope you have gone through the questions. Right, uh, now are you ready to listen to the dialogue then? Okay, here it is. Welcome to Grammar Challenge from BBCLearningEnglish.com. Let's meet this week's challenger. My name is Sung Hyun Lee. I'm 23 years old. I'm Korean. I love London and I love everything British, so I came to London. Sung Hyung, welcome to Grammar Challenge. Thank you for helping us out today. I want you to listen to this conversation and answer this question. What time are the people talking about? Past, present or future? What are you doing on Saturday? Do you want to go and catch a movie? Sorry, I can't. I'm going to visit friends in the country. How about Sunday? That should be fine. Oh no, wait a minute. I'm playing golf with my boss. It's important. I'm hoping for a promotion. Good luck. Oh, don't worry. I've decided. I'm going to lose. Okay, so are they talking about the past, the present, or the future? The future. Exactly. So it's about the future. I want you to listen to parts of this conversation one more time. And are they talking about people's hopes, about their dreams, or about their plans? What are you doing on Saturday? I'm going to visit friends in the country. I'm playing golf with my boss. I'm going to lose. OK, so are they talking about their hopes and their dreams or are they talking about their plans? Plan. 
It's a plan. Yes. yes, it's a plan. It's an arrangement. And uh, to tell us more about describing our future plans and arrangements, here's Nula. There are a number of different ways of talking about the future in English. Today, we're looking at two ways to talk about future plans, using the present continuous and going to. In an earlier program, we saw that the present continuous is used to describe actions that are happening at the time of speaking. We can also use the same form to talk about and ask about fixed arrangements. That's future plans that have already been made. What are you doing at the weekend? I'm visiting my parents. I'm travelling to Spain on business. Another way of talking about future plans is to use going to plus the base infinitive. We've seen previously that this form can be used to talk about future predictions. It can also be used to talk about your intentions or decisions for the future. I'm going to get a new car. I'm going to visit my mother. I'm going to study medicine at university. So, to recap, both the present continuous and going to plus the base infinitive can be used to talk about future plans. Often, there's not much difference between them and you can use either form. But generally, if a plan is a fixed arrangement, then the present continuous is better. If a plan is an intention or a decision, then going to is the better form to use. That's all from me. Good luck in your grammar challenge. That was Nula telling us about how to describe future plans, either with going to or using the present continuous. To practice these forms, I want to arrange a meeting with you. Uh, I think we can arrange a, a, a private English lesson. This is your diary for next week. I'm going to try and arrange a time with you when we can have a meeting. So, for example, if you look at your diary and I say, uh, can we meet on Sunday afternoon? Sunday afternoon, I'm going to lunch with mom. Oh, you're going to lunch uh, with mum. Are you going to cook or is your mother going to cook? Oh, she is going to cook. Oh, she's going to cook. Yes. Okay. Um, right. What about Saturday morning? Saturday morning, uh, I'm going to play tennis. Oh, you're going to play tennis. Uh, what about uh, Thursday morning? How's Thursday morning for you? Oh, sorry. I'm going to dentist. I have problem my teeth. Oh dear. Oh, I, I'm I'm sorry about that. Um, mm, uh, Friday is free. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, I'm sorry. On Friday, um, I'm I'm meeting my bank manager oh. on Friday, so um, I'm not free uh, really? on Friday morning. Um, how about Sunday evening? Sunday, okay, I'm free. Uh, free, okay. Well, write it in on your diary. Sunday evening, English lesson uh, okay. with Callum. Okay. okay, that's good. That's good. Okay, um, well done. Thank you very much. Uh, well done for completing your diary grammar challenge. Grammar challenge from bbclearningenglish.com What are you doing this weekend? This weekend? Mm, I'm going to Camp the Market. Uh-huh. And Notting Hill. Mm -hmm. It's very nice in uh, okay. Camden Market and yes. Notting Hill. Yes. Yes. You are, you're going to have a good time. Thank you very much. BBCLearningEnglish.com. Okay. Uh, so I hope you have uh, listened to this dialogue, this interesting dialogue, and you understand it. So are you ready for the questions? Okay, so let's start with the first question. Where is Song Heon from? Maybe I can't pronounce this Hyeon or Heon. Uh, where is Song Heon from? Okay, you are right. She is from Korea. That's right. Okay, uh, and if you said South Korea, that is also correct. 
Okay, we move on to the second question. The second question is, why has the man decided to lose his golf match? The answer is, to please his boss as he is expecting promotion. He is hoping that he will be promoted and he wants to please his boss. In order to please his boss, he has decided to lose his golf match that he is going to play against his boss. Okay, now which structure is preferable for talking about fixed arrangements in future? By structure, I mean which form? Which language form is preferable for talking about fixed arrangements in future? That's right, present continuous. We use present continuous when we talk about fixed arrangements in future. And which structure is preferable for talking about intentions and decisions? We've talked about it already, so it's not difficult. The answer is be going to. Okay, the last question. When is Song going to meet her teacher for her English classes? Right, so the, uh, her teacher and Song, they uh, arrange a meeting for her English classes. Uh, so when do they finally, when are they going to meet, uh, when is Song going to meet her teacher for her English classes? That's right, the answer is Sunday afternoon. Very good, uh, you are good at reading a dialogue and you are good at listening a dialogue and uh, probably now you can, uh, you can look back and you can recall how uh, skillful you have become in English and how uh, you have improved your listening and your, uh, your reading skills. Okay, we move on. Uh, let's talk about making predictions. Prediction is like, uh, to make prediction means to foretell something. To, pre uh, to predict something means to, uh, to forecast something, like weather forecast. So you foretell what will happen in future. Um, and we learned that we use be going to to make predictions based on some clues in the present. Uh, if there are no clues and you are merely make a sudden prediction, you can use will. But if there are some clues in the present, uh, you use be going to to make future predictions. For example, um, if I failed in the exam on the basis of this clue, I can predict that my father is going to be angry with me. So if I say I failed in the exam, I can predict my father is going to be angry with me. So is going to be is the prediction. I can see dark clouds. So if I hear dark, clou uh, dark clouds, uh, thunder and clouds, and lightning, I can expect rain. And I'll say, it's going to rain. I can see dark clouds, it's going to rain. I can hear thunder, I think it's going to rain. Okay, now suppose it has started raining already and we don't have the umbrella. What is your prediction? That's right. We are going to get wet. Okay, now look at another situation. Someone says, get up, it's 8 o'clock. So what's your prediction? That's right. Oh, I'm going to be late again. I'm going to be late again. All right, here is another situation. Hurry up, the train is blowing the whistle. Hurry up, the train is blowing the whistle. So what's your prediction? So what's your prediction this time? Yeah, it could be something like, we are going to miss the train. Oh, I think we are going to miss the train. Okay, here is another situation. 
Look at that man. He is driving very fast. Oh my God, he is going to have an accident. Now this is my, uh, this is the prediction here. So the point that we learned here is that we can make prediction with be going to, uh, we can make prediction with be going to um, when it, our prediction is based on some external evidence or clue. Okay, uh, now what about fixed schedules? Uh, our future is planned sometimes, but it is not a fixed schedule. For example, I want to become a doctor. I'm going to be a doctor. This is my intention. This is my future plan. But I have not made any schedule for it. And this schedule is not fixed. So sometimes uh, the actions are scheduled and they are fixed. Like uh, these lectures are scheduled and they are fixed. So when talking about schedules, timetables, and itineraries, the present simple tense is used to refer to a future event that is planned and is not likely to change. So we use present simple tense when we are talking about a planned future, fixed and scheduled future, which is fixed or scheduled uh, by a timetable or maybe there is a schedule um, or there is an itinerary. So if it is scheduled, if it is fixed, then I can use present simple tense to talk about future. For example, uh, and usually this plan, because it is scheduled, it is not likely to change. It is not expected to change. So. Uh, one can't be 100% sure about future, but if the chances are that, uh, if the 99% chances are that the plan or the schedule is not going to change, we can use present simple tense to talk about future. Uh, for example, I have a meeting on the 15th, but I'm free on the following day. I have a meeting on the 15th means that uh, I, we use the word have. I have, uh, and have is the first form of the verb, which is uh, future, uh, which is present simple tense, and here I'm using uh, present simple tense uh, because uh, this is scheduled, this is fixed. This meeting is scheduled; it is fixed. Okay, again, what time is your flight? We we don't ask what time is it going to be your flight, because we are not talking about your intention. We are not going to say what time will your flight be, okay, because uh, it is not an, uh, a sudden future. Rather, there is a flight schedule. Flights uh, arrive and depart according to their schedules. And uh, if it is scheduled, then you can use present simple. What time is your flight? Okay. The last train to Rome leaves at 22.30. On day six, we visit the pyramids. His father retires in two years. So you know all these events, whether it is a train, whether it is a visit according to a travel itinerary, or whether it is the retirement plan, all of these are scheduled. Uh, and they are not likely to change, all right? The Spring Festival is on Tuesday this year, okay? And here, instead of Spring Festival, you can talk about Eid, because once it is fixed, uh, once it is announced, then you can make, uh, you can use present simple tense for it. Uh, so, so far, we have learned that we can use will for sudden decisions. We can use will for predictions uh, without any external evidence or clue. And we use be going to when action is planned, 
when uh, we talk about our future decisions that are not sudden, that are planned, and uh, when we talk about our intentions. And we use present simple tense uh, for future when uh, the plan is fixed, when it is scheduled, when it is fixed, and it is not likely to change. Okay. Uh, okay, uh, I have certainly remembered that uh, we also use present simple tense to talk about uh, about future events that are scheduled and very often in the newspapers you have uh, the headlines that run something like this. The Prime Minister visits Egypt next week. Okay, or uh, the Prime Minister meets the Chief of Army Staff next Tuesday. So this meets and visits is present simple tense, but uh, we, can, we often use it in the headlines uh, because usually these meetings are, or visits are uh, not likely to change and they are scheduled, they are fixed. Okay, very well. Now let's move on. Uh, all right, so far we have learned that we can use will to talk about future, we can use be going to to talk about future, we can use present simple to talk about future, and now we learn that we can sometimes also use present continu continuous tense to talk about future. I hope I'm not confusing you. Yes, we can use present continuous tense to talk about future. And un in which situation? Let's read that out. The present continuous is used to talk about arrangements for events that at a time, uh, sorry, the present continuous is used to talk about arrangements for events at a time later than now. That means events in future that are arranged. There is a suggestion that more than one person is aware of the event and that some preparation has already happened. Okay, so this is an arranged event in future. Some preparation has already happened and maybe two, three people are already aware of this event. In this sense, uh, in this situation, we will use present continuous tense for future. For example, we say, I'm meeting Jim at the airport. I'm meeting Jim at the airport does not mean that I'm meeting Jim now. I'm talking about future. So if I say I'm, I'm meeting Jim at the airport, uh, it means that both Jim and I have discussed this. We have already arranged it and uh, we are, um, and both the people are aware of it. Similarly, we can say, I'm leaving tomorrow. Okay, this is an arrangement, and I've already bought my train ticket. So this is an already an arrangement, and I've made some preparation already. We are having a staff meeting next Monday. All right, so we have maybe made some preparation already and all members of staff have been told about it. Okay, so uh, when uh, something is fixed, when something is arranged, we have done some preparation and we have informed few people, we can use present continuous tense for that. Okay, let's have some more examples. Is she seeing him tomorrow? So we are using present continuous tense. Is she seeing him tomorrow? Uh, this means, is it already arranged and are you aware of it? Seeing here means meeting. Is she meeting him tomorrow? He isn't working next week. This is already arranged and we are already aware of it. And maybe we have made some preparations. They aren't leaving until the end of next year. Again, this is an arranged event and we've made some uh, preparations for this and we are aware of it. We are staying with friends when we get to Boston. Okay, so we can use present continuous tense for the future. Uh, when the future is, a uh, future event is arranged 
and we have made some preparations and some of the people are at least aware of this plan. Okay, uh, now when to use present simple and when to use present continuous. Maybe you are wondering uh, because present simple is used for fixed events in future and present continuous tense is used for events that are already arranged. Uh, so you should be careful. The simple present is used when a future event is part of a program or timetable. Notice the difference between we are having a staff meeting next Monday and we have a staff meeting next Monday. So there is a difference here. We are having a staff meeting next Monday means that we have arranged this meeting, we are preparing for it, and people are informed about it. But if I say we have a staff meeting next Monday, this means that we have a meeting every Monday and it is on the timetable, it's on the schedule. We are having a staff meeting, might not be on the schedule. Uh, so uh, we use present simple for an arranged event, but this event is on the timetable, it is on the schedule, and maybe this is a regular feature. Whereas present continuous is used for arranged events for which we have made some preparation and we have informed some. Okay, so let me repeat. Uh, we use present simple when something is scheduled, when something is on the timetable, when something is in the itinerary. Uh, but we use present continuous tense for arrangements, for events that are arranged for which we have made some preparations and some of the people are already aware of it. Maybe all the people are already aware of it. Uh, so you should remember the difference between we are having a staff meeting next Monday and we have a staff meeting next Monday. There is a difference in meaning. Okay, I hope now you understand the difference between present simple and present continuous when we use these tenses for future. Okay, uh, now what's the difference between present continuous and going to? What's the difference between going to and present continuous when we use them for future? Sometimes there is no real difference between an intention, that is going to, and a plan for which we use present continuous. In this case, it doesn't matter which we use. Um, so we can choose either to use going to or to use present continuous tense for future when there is no real difference between an intention and a plan. So for example, if I say I'm going to be a doctor, this is clearly an intention. But if I say I'm going to see a dentist, maybe it's not merely an intention, maybe it's a plan. So if it, if, uh, it is a plan, I can say uh, I am seeing a dentist. I'm going to see a dentist, I'm seeing a dentist. Both can be used if it is not clear whether it is a plan or it is uh, uh, or merely an in intention. Okay, for example, we are going to paint the bedroom tomorrow. This is our intention and we are painting the bedroom tomorrow. This is our plan, right? Uh, since it is difficult to find out whether it is merely your intention to do something or it is your plan to do something. Um, so in these cases, we can use either of these. We can either say going to or we can use present continuous. Okay, great. Uh, now we have learned, so far we have learned, that for talking about future, we can use future simple. We can use be going to. We can use present simple tense. And we can use present continuous tense. Um, and we have also learned when to use which form. Uh, it is important that when you practice talking about future, you use these variety of forms to enrich your language and uh, to bring it uh, to natural speech. Okay, we move on. And here I want to give you a practice situation. 
Look at the daily plan handout and prepare a travel itinerary for your friend. Your itinerary should include daily plan. Here is the situation. Now before I read the situation, let me explain as I had promised uh, to tell you what an itinerary is. An itinerary is a detailed plan, detailed plan of events. Uh, for example, we have a flight itinerary. So when uh, does the flight leave? When does it arrive? When do you have the connecting flight, etc., etc. But here we are going to talk about a travel itinerary. In travel itinerary, uh, you make a schedule, you make a timetable. Uh, suppose you have some guests who will come, so you make, a, uh, you make an itinerary, uh, that means a detailed plan on what they are going to do at what time, on what day. So it is a detailed plan of action uh, for travelers. Okay, so uh, what are you going to do? I have included a daily plan in the handout, so you can download that daily plan. It is simply uh, like a timetable. Um, and you are going to prepare a travel itinerary for your friend. Uh, your itinerary should include this daily plan. Here is the situation. Uh, your pen friend or your Facebook friend Peter is coming to Pakistan for a week. Remember I'm using is coming. So this means it is already arranged. I'm using present continuous tense. This means uh, it is already arranged and you are already aware of it. Peter is coming to Pakistan for a week. He is coming to Pakistan for the first time and knows very little about the country. So he doesn't know about its culture, its uh, dress code, its um, traditions, um, its geography, its history, and uh, I mean he doesn't, he doesn't, doesn't know much about Pakistan. He'll stay in Pakistan for a week and would like to visit important cultural and scenic spots in and around your city. Okay. Uh, so you should think of interesting cultural and scenic spots in and around your city. If for example you live in Sahiwal, uh, you have the archaeological sites at Harappa. Or if you live uh, in a very small town and you don't have any such scenic or cultural spots, you can imagine that you live in a big city uh, and you can uh, think of some cultural and scenic spots that are around that city. He would also like to stay in a hotel and would like to try Pakistani cuisine. So you make a detailed plan uh, on what date, at what time you will see what where will he stay and uh, when will he leave his hotel? When will he arrive at that scenic point? When will you have lunch? When will he come back? Uh, so try to make a detailed travel itinerary for your friend and keep this situation in mind. Uh, now this is not very difficult because actually what is required from you is to think, to plan and then you are going to make uh, fill out the handout you are going to make a daily plan uh, for this okay once you have made this itinerary once you have written this itinerary uh, you can also use this itinerary to practice dialogues now suppose that you are going to inform uh, your friend uh, Peter on the phone or maybe on the internet. So you make a phone call uh, and just imagine that your friend Peter has either arrived or you are talking to him on the phone and uh, he doesn't have the itinerary in front of him but you do and then you are going to uh, talk to him and you are going to tell him what your plan is. Okay, uh, you can also download another handout uh, which is called role play and in this handout you have detailed instructions 
on how to talk about future. Now this role play uh, will be done in pairs. So think of, uh, choose a partner, ask someone to be your partner, and uh, you have in that, that handout, uh, you have a worksheet. Uh, so if you are speaker A and your partner is speaker B, you will look at your own worksheets and according to, according to the instructions, you will perform the dialogue in order to practice talking about future. So uh, you can uh, extend this practice by uh, making various changes. And while you are writing this itinerary and while you are practicing this dialogue, I would appreciate if you could use a variety of uh, forms. Okay, uh, the reason why I have told you so many forms to talk about future is uh, because naturally, uh, in natural speech, uh, the native speakers rarely use uh, future simple uh, for talking about future. Most of the times they are using present simple, present continuous, and be going, be going to in order to talk about future. Uh, so you should, be, uh, you should be careful and you should uh, use a variety of these expressions and you should also learn which expression means what. So uh, this is what uh, we have learned in this lecture. Let's have a quick recap. Let's have a look at the summary of lecture number 16. In lecture number 16, we learned how to talk about future plans and intentions. Uh, we talked about planned actions, planned events, arranged events, and we also learned how to talk about our intentions. Uh, and in fact, we also learned how to make predictions about future. And while doing it, we learned some grammar points. We learned uh, how to use present simple and present continuous tenses for uh, future, when we talk about future. So we learned that we use present simple tense for future when future is, uh, when an event is fixed, when it is uh, scheduled, when it is given in a timetable. And usually it is a regular feature. And we use present continuous tense for an event which is arranged, for which we have made some preparations already. And uh, some of the people, at least some of the people, have already been informed about it. OK, we also learned uh, when to use future simple tense for future. Well, future simple tense is used uh, for many purposes, but in this lecture, we only learned one of its uses. And that is when you make a sudden decision or when you predict something suddenly uh, without uh, depending on any external clue. Right? So we use future simple when we suddenly decide to do something. For example, when we suddenly make an offer. Okay. And we also learned uh, how to use be going to and when to use be going to. Be going to can be used for various situations. It can be used for intentions. It can be used for planned futures. Um, uh, so be going to is uh, probably the most useful uh, expression when we talk about future. And in the end, we also learned how to write itinerary, what itinerary is, and how to write a travel itinerary. Uh, in fact, you are only required to write a daily schedule, but in, uh, you can um, elaborate it in order to make a detailed itinerary if you want to. So with this, we come to the end of lecture number 16. Hope uh, that after completing the assignments in this, uh, completing the practice activities in this lecture, uh, you will be able to uh, feel more confident uh, talking about future 
and you can show a variety of expressions to uh, express or demonstrate your mastery of English language. Uh, thank you very much and uh, congratulations because you have completed uh, half of the video lectures today. It was lecture 16 and all in all you are going to listen to uh, 32 lectures. So today is a landmark because you have uh, completed half of the lectures. Thank you very much.